I was seeing, you know, you're, you're seeing Trace and Joey and Armand and Nizi and Jerome. And, you know, those guys are relatively really new to what we're doing and what's going on in terms of the game. So you have to put it in perspective a little bit. Uh, missing our backcourt, our most experienced guys, and even having Rob just for basically a three windows in the game to play about 12 minutes is all we were going to have him for. Uh, you know, hopefully as they get back, you know, that alleviates some of that pressure. Uh, as we fell through it, I thought at halftime, the guys did a much better job of coming out in the second half, and the ball movement was way better. We had a lot of different guys touching it, moving it, and uh, we were able to establish what we aspire to be, which is a team that you know, can get fouled and a team that can you know, play a lot with a lot of different guys out there uh, together. Uh, defensively, we have a long way to go. Uh, there's going to be a lot of mistakes and whatnot on the film, and part of it's experience level, part of it's the newness, and part of it is there was very little preparation or scouting for the opponent. So uh, we'll take it all in and we'll get better. And uh, you know, hopefully as we get a little bit healthier as we move along, we get a couple more guys out there to handle the ball. But uh, some good things. You know, I'm not uh, at all naive to think you know, this team right now is anywhere near capable or where it's supposed to be or where it can be. But uh, I think I'm still excited about our depth. I'm still excited about how many guys we have that we can throw in there, I think, that can really help us play. And, um, our new guys continue to kind of help add, add some firepower. So we'll take the film, we'll work on it, and you know, from this point forward, obviously, we're ready to prepare for real, real action. Coach, you, you guys fell behind there 29 28. I think you got a timeout at that point. Do you, do you remember kind of what your message was at that point? I mean, I think we probably had to start and stop with you know, playing smart and playing hard. And, you know, that, that one stretch after about the first four to six minutes, we subbed. As we sub, we had new players come in the game. And you know, my hope is that when we sub, as you look at our group, you know, there was very little drop off, there was very little change. And uh, the game changed, you know, with the substitution pattern. So we have to look at that. And, you know, we just you know, we had uh, you know, at times you know, guys that have not practiced or played the position they were playing in the game today. It's very difficult to do that at times. From a defensive standpoint, at times you look out there and you see Justin and Jerome, those guys are guarding six foot guards. That's the first time they've probably ever done that. So it's a little bit, but we're not applying as much pressure as you want to, but you're realizing you have you know, forwards in there, you know, guarding perimeter players. So the stickiness and the toughness that we needed on the ball wasn't there, you know, especially in that, in that, in that run. But our offense took care of it in the second half. You know, our offense moved it, and uh, we were much more efficient in the, in the second half, being able to handle the ball and do some things that we were in the first half. Coach, to Trey Jackson Davis and Armand Franklin, uh, their comfort was, for their first game, seemed to be very comfortable for their first start. Well, both guys have been very, very good, you know, from the first day on campus till now. Uh, neither guy's afraid, and I think Armand's the one guy that even surprises me a little bit. You know, he's been very, very good in our two live action games. He played out of position tonight for 30 minutes, and he hasn't learned one play, playing point guard, but he started the game at point guard tonight. And we'll be kind of endured here in the last 48 some hours. But uh, both those young guys are good players, man. They're going to add a lot of value here. Um, you know, they're just learning. You know, and you're looking out there and you're, you're mad at them and you kind of get frustrated with them and you're saying to yourself, like, you never probably really imagined that our mom was going to play 35 minutes tonight. You know, it's like you thrust those guys in there, they get their feet wet, the next thing you know they grow up right before your eyes. I think both of those guys are competitive. Winners, they're good teammates, and uh, they're two really, really important pieces to what we've been trying to do, and they're going to play a big role in this team. Coach, you had mentioned yesterday that you know, Rob hadn't had a chance to do much this month, but uh, you talk a little bit about what the thought process was to try to get him out there tonight for, you know, for what you did? He's had one practice basically since about October 4th, which was yesterday. So he practiced yesterday, which was very little restriction, and he did really well in practice. Um, his comfort level with what he's dealing with from his abdominal injuries and, and whatnot was uh, increased. But, you know, for us, if Rob doesn't play tonight or get a little bit of action, you know, we're really starting to set him up where he's, you know, we're not going to know how he feels after a game or, or whatnot. So the, the plan was to play him between 8 and 12 minutes tonight, which he got 13. I played him a minute 53 too much, I guess. But uh, just the fact that he went out there, which was his second workout, basically two, two and a half to three. So it was just good to be able to have him get in there and help a little bit. Those 14, obviously, is a big part of what we're doing. And really big. Devontae hasn't really participated, but even 
missing an owl. Owl played a significant amount of minutes in our Marquette scrimmage, and not having an owl is a big difference. You know, just in our team, he's an older guy, he has experience. So, getting one of those two back here in the near future, both of them back, that will really help our cause. But uh, you know, as you look at it, you know, we're doing what we got. And I think you know, Armando and Denise playing a ton of minutes, which is good for them. You know, they're learning, they're, they're, they're just getting a ton of reps. On Justin Smith, 18 points in 20 minutes, three assists, no turnovers, really efficient in scoring and opportunities. What led to him to be that efficient in this time before tonight? I think he pretty much didn't force anything. He didn't see any out of character drives. He didn't see anything forced. Uh, I thought his teammates did a really good job of finding him around the basket, especially in the second half. He was able to draw some fouls. And then he did a good job in transition, getting out a few times, which is where he's good. And we found him where he's able to do that. But stepped up at the line and Obviously, eight of nine from the foul line is a really big thing. He drew seven fouls, which is positive. Uh, we got to get Justin rebounded the ball a little bit better for us, though. He got two offensive rebounds in the second half, which is good. But in, in, in totality, you know, in the whole big scheme of things, Justin has to be able to rebound the ball better for us um, overall. But uh, he was he was he was pretty good tonight. Pretty pretty efficient. Not 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 very erratic or anything like that. I stayed within the game. Talked about how good you think this team could be defensively. The second half kind of start in particular, do you feel like just how important was your defense to kind of triggering some things, getting into the open floor, getting some easy baskets? Yeah, I mean, I, we just talked about it. You know, we spent most of our time as a team and then talking after the game. I mean, if there's ever a group that if they just hang their hat on their intensity level, the toughness level, and committed to the defensive side of the ball with our depth and size, um, that alone can make us a, a terrific and tough tough team to play against. Um, uh, I think the one thing that's a little unique right now is we don't have the quickness level of the guard that we're accustomed to on the ball. You know, Rob played a little bit tonight, but Armand's a true freshman, and other than that, we didn't really have a perimeter player on defense. We have Justin and Jerome and Denise, those guys are running around with these little guys. That's different for them. So, But without question, if this team has a chance to reach its potential, it has to become an elite defensive team. It has to become a team, even with its youth, youth and newness, has to become a team that can win with its defense. And uh, if that happens, if you become a good defensive team, a team that buys in and believes in it, it's hard playing. A lot of the things offensively that you would sort of worry about to take care of themselves. But uh, no, that was the message after the game. The big thing with this group is to understand how important it is. And not that it's never important to every group, but if there's ever a group that can hang their hat and become a great defensive team, this team right here, sure, sure sure would be beneficial in doing it because I think we have the talent and the depth and we have the experience level in some positions and as these younger guys and new guys get better with what we're doing, you know, it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be important. You said that Armand hasn't been asked to play point that much so far. After seeing how he performed tonight, is that something you might consider going forward with a larger lineup possibly? You know, I, I think in general Armand's going to be best suited playing with the guy uh, with the with, with the ball kind of running our team. We have three guys that have experience doing it. We keep it simpler for him. Uh, but right now with what we're dealing with, I don't see how he doesn't continue to learn that role and, and, and do some things there. Uh, you know, we're not going to be able to play with certain lineups, certain games. It's just not going to be as effective. You know, you're going to have to play smaller some games. Some games maybe you're able to get away with playing big. But, you know, to me, keeping it as simple as possible for him where he's really doing the same thing every day and doing the same thing in the game every day is good. You know, for him to be able to come out and play a lot of minutes and point, you know, it sounds good, but like, you know, for him, he hasn't really done that. So, uh, you know, I'm proud of him because I think at the end of the day, he'll do what you ask him to do and he works at it. But by no, by no mistake is it by design. I think he's going to be at his best when he's with somebody. Um, Coach, I noticed that Joey Brunk started over Javon tonight. Is that a position he's earned as the season progresses? Yeah, the team that started the game tonight earned it, without question. The 21 practices in a scrimmage game, uh, definitely, Joey, Joey definitely earned, earned, a, earned a role starting. But you know, like I told these guys, I don't necessarily count starters or finishers or whatever. I mean, there could be a different guy every night with this crew. And I think that's the good thing about it. Uh, just to go back to Armand, I guess, I mean, you said he didn't know one play. How did he pull it off, basically? I mean, how did he manage to get himself in position to get right and run the offense tonight? We had a shoot around this afternoon and sort of ran through a few things for him. Um, and he's smart. He's intelligent enough to know to figure it out a little bit here where, you know, it's, it's, there's not a ton and he's not going to run in a thousand things. And in the second half, to make it simpler on everybody, 
playing out of position. We really didn't run a ton. We kind of just relied on our passing game and moved it. And I thought that actually looked pretty good for, for this time of year with that many guys out there. There was a lot of movement, a lot of action. And we took the pressure, I think, off of plays. Or I don't really know this play because I haven't ran it before. But we let them play a little bit more. I thought in the second half that really helped us. Uh, you mentioned the three areas yesterday, rebounding, free throw shooting, and taking care of the ball. How would you evaluate uh, how it was tonight compared to Marquette growth-wise? Uh, taking care of the ball, I think, um, I don't really know the numbers at the half. I know at the halftime we talked a lot about our offensive rebounding not being there. Uh, we had a lot of guys with zeros, goose eggs there. It changed in the second half. Uh, the turnovers, we had seven, I believe, at the half. We finished with 16, which is six over what we're trying to deal with right now. We don't need to turn it over. Some of them were unforced and whatnot, but uh, the rebound total ended up being plus 14 on our end, but you know, I think we're gonna, we're gonna deal with a little bit harder harder rebounding woes, but uh, those are the things we're talking about. I thought the one thing that our guys did a really nice job with after half was the free throw discrepancy in the first half, them being six of 11 and us being five of six. You could just tell right away our offense was getting zero done in terms of effectiveness. In the second half, being able to get, I think, 24 free throws in the second half is a much different feel offensively. It's a much better feel for our guys. They did a good job there. Coach Nathan and Al and Devontae obviously changed things up a little bit, but how did you feel your big guys all played well together? Yeah, I mean, right now we're, we're kind of, we're, we're, we have the ability to play small, whether we want to go with Jerome or Justin in there as a fourth guy around one. Um, but right now we're kind of staying pat with, with Deron, Race, Joey, and Trace being sort of as a rotation. Um, that can change. Um, right now with our depth, we don't have the ability to not have those other guys on the perimeter. So they did a fine job. I mean, we're going to play against more skilled teams. You're going to play against more perimeter-oriented teams where things can change. But that's where that foul line, that's where the post, that's where the rebound, and you, know, you have to be able to win certain ways. And one of the ways we have to be able to win is with Trace on the floor, race on the floor with another guy we are able to play. And I thought in the second half, more importantly, they were able to do that. Uh, what we're going to get in trouble here early is going to be defensively covering the three-point line with our front line and being able to you know, cover out and be a little bit more pressure-oriented. We're going to have to get better there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.